What's up, YouTube? It's Fitzbro, and this is your guide to the Malian Civilization for Age of Empires 4. It is currently available on the pup build of the game if you have Steam, but it's going to be released in its full state at the end of October along with the Ottomans. I also have a Civilization overview for the Ottomans. I'll leave a card up above if you want to check that out, and I have some build order guides for them, so go check that out on the channel. And if you're enjoying all this new content for the DLC of Age of Empires 4, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that alert bell because I'm going to be bringing you some guides as well as some high level casted games. Let's get into it. Let's break down all the unique mechanics of this civilization so you know how to either play as them or against them out on the battlefield. So, first of all, I picked the new biome here. It doesn't look beautiful. I think it's the Sahara or something. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's like the Sahara biome. Anyways, uh, some interesting things about them. They have this building called the Pit Mine. Now, this Pit Mine, it is kind of like an Uvu, but it goes on gold. It costs 150 wood, and you build that on a gold vein. So, I'm going to walk over here to my gold and start to building that. And you can build one of these per age, so it increases the the build cap every time you age up. So you can get a total of four of them if you reach the fourth age. And it will start generating gold, but it does not deplete the deposit. So while villagers they take gold out of the uh, out of the, the the ground and it is depleted, this mine will gather gold. You can see right now five per minute, but this vein will never lose gold. So even when this runs down to zero, it'll still keep gathering. So that's a kind of a unique thing about them. And you can boost the rates of which it gathers by building houses and mining camps around this aura. So you can kind of see that orange aura around the building right now. So uh, how it works is it gets 30 gold per minute without depleting. Deposit has been depleted. It, it'll You could still be replaced on exhausted gold veins, so no worry about that. The gold extraction rate of open pit mines is increased by 25% for each house or mining camp built within the influence. And speaking of houses, they have half price houses, 25 wood. They have half the population as well. So you gotta constantly be building some houses. But what you wanna do is build these around your mining camp like this. And it also will give a boost to, uh, if you build a mining camp there, that'll also provide a boost. So watch this. Uh, this, this rate will go up as soon as that house completes and you see that happening right now. Now it takes some time for it to catch up with the, uh, the goal per minute. But essentially, that's what's going on. You build these pit mines, so as you go through the ages, make sure you're building these these, uh, these structures. It's free gold. Passive gold income is going to be very good. Okay, let's look at a few other mechanics. They have a unique tower called the Toll Outpost. Let's put one right here. There's that Toll Outpost. And it's just like a, a normal outpost. It doesn't have any additional stats like a wooden fortress might, but what it does, it can... Uh, it can be upgraded, it, it, I'm sorry, it passing traders and trade sh ships instantly provide an additional 10% of the carried gold. So if I have a trader and it walks within this aura, it's going to get a boost. So almost like you'd build your towers as the Mongols with like a yam network boost, you wanna build these along your trade routes, it's gonna give a boost. I believe you can do this boost up to five times. So you can't stack like 30 towers and have ridiculous gold. But even with that, the gold you get from that is crazy. And let's uh, let's build their mill so you can see what that looks like. I'll put that right here. And uh, while that mill is being built, it, uh, being built, there's nothing else really unique in this first age. Well, I guess we could talk about the scout. Uh, the scout costs a little bit more. It costs 90 food because it can be upgraded to be a warrior scout in the next age. So you'll see they're stable here in a bit. Uh, they're able to upgrade these scouts, which basically, basically if you invest in those early scouts early in the dark age, when you hit the next age, you have a stable, you upgrade them. Suddenly the scouts can be quite good out on the battlefield. Okay, their mill looks very different. Look at that. No rotating parts or anything like that. One thing, unique thing you do at the mill is you can buy cattle. Now, these cattle, no other civilization can do this. They cost 100 gold, and you're going to have a passive gold income because of all the pit mines you're going to have going on. So you should have typically be floating a good amount of gold. And what you want to do is you train these, and you put them in the cattle ranch. But we'll have to get that in the next age. So we'll I'll show you that in just a moment. But you can also eat the, the cow if you want to. You can spin the gold. You can eat the cow. You gather at the same rate as a boar. So that's very good. I've talked to uh, the mister, and he says that, he, that sometimes he'll eat a cow in order to boost himself to the castle age, and then maybe from there do a cow boom. And we'll talk more about the moo here in just a second. Okay, let's uh, let's go to the next age. But before we do that, let's look at your age up options. You've got the Saharan Trade Network or the Mansa Quarry. 
Now, the first one, acts a toll outpost that comes with defensive arrows as tech already researched. So this is basically a defensive structure. It's a toll outpost, one of those towers we saw right there. All traders and trade ships uh, tax will generate uh, food equal to the tax gold. All other toll outposts will generate 50% of tax gold as food. So essentially, it buffs all of your toll outposts. Might be an option you want to use if you really want to go for a trade-heavy composition. But the the clear front run runner in, in selection has been the Mansa Quarry. It generates 75 gold per minute and can be toggled to generate stone. So when you get to the next stage, toggle that to stone right away and you'll be on your way to two or three town centers. Let's build that Mansa Quarry. We'll put it right here. And this will never run out. It's basically just sitting there generating gold or stone, which can be extremely valuable into the late game. That's why this sieve has one of the best booms out there. Okay, so there's our cattle. This thing has 500 food, and when we reach the next age, we'll actually be building these uh, cattle ranches. Now, let's talk about this for a second. So you build these cattle ranches. They're essentially pl square plots, kind of similar to a farm, and you can garrison up to three cattle in it. It will provide passive food income. Now, it's going to take time to pay off, right? you got to consider you're spending 100 stone uh, or sorry, 100 gold on a, on a cow, and then you got to wait for it to generate. But over time, uh, those are really going to be good. You can get up to 20 cows so simple math three times seven would be 21 so that's what you're going to want seven cattle uh sev several of these uh cattle ranches and then you'll have one empty slot in that last one there we go we are in the next age and let's go ahead we'll build some of those cattle's uh pins so you can see them i'll get some right there and i'll train up a few more cows there we go. And when that's complete, now these these uh, these cattle ranches, they cost 100 wood. Uh, and they will, each cattle you put in there will generate 28 gold per minute. And there's a way to buff this. I'll show you in a bit. So I, I garrison them in there. And when they're garrisoned, they can't be attacked by the enemy. So they can't run by, kill my cows. Now, if they kill the ranch, they can, in fact, kill the cow, which then you can still just gather it. But it doesn't decay like in other Age of Empires games. But that's just something you should know about. Okay. Now, we're in the next age. Let's take a look at a few of these buildings. Okay, I'm going to move my scout here. Let's build the archery range. Let's build our stable. We could have built our barracks in the first stage, but let's build that as well. So you can see the, uh, the units that we're going to be looking at here with this civilization. Now, their walls, by the way, are the best looking in the game. Look at this. Hold on. Let me build a little wall segment here just so you can see. Oh yeah, it's you can just tell from the outline. Like, look at that wall. Oh, it's badass. It's gonna be looking great. Okay, now here's that monster quarry I was telling you about. It's just generating stone, or I'm sorry, gold right now. I can talk about over to stone. A lot of players like to do multi towns that are builds by moving this over to stone. So it's very easy to get that. Play very defensively, right? Later on in the game, you're gonna benef benef benefit from this cow boom paying off, right? So those are the type of things you're gonna think about. Okay, let's look at each of these buildings. I'll train one of each of the units. Real quick, and then we will take a look at them. Okay, so the barracks. Uh, all these units for the Malians, they kind of have a different take on the counter system. They still have their counters, but they are not the same as like an archer, spearman, horseman. It's not like that, okay? The very first unit you have is the Donzo, okay? So that is this unit right here. And a unique thing he has is he's like a spearman, but he gets a cooldown. He can throw a spear. So it says it will throw a javelin periodically against nearby targets. So if you're kiting back against from these, like even if you have spearmen, you're going to be in trouble because every few seconds he's going to be able to throw his spear at you. And the Donzo, it's just like Spearman, a very good anti-cavalry specialist, but it also has that additional uh, range to attack every once in a while. It also has some melee armor. So this is kind of pretty much going to be most of the front line of your army, this, this Donzo, uh, with archers on the back line. And then we have the, um, the Musufati Warrior. The Musufati Warrior, it has an stealth ability. Now, I'll activate this. It activates for 20 seconds. It can be revealed by scouts, outposts, or if they engage in combat. But look at this. Okay, that, that says he's invisible. I honestly, or, or, or I think it, it, she technically, uh, I don't like the animation. I wish I could like really tell this unit was invisible. It's really hard to tell from afar that like, oh, that one has a stealth activated, but we could see it here. It's invisible for an additional few seconds. And this unit is very unique. It, it's very speedy. Look at this, uh, 1.38 uh, 1 movement speed. So there we go. 
a uh, lot faster than the spearmen at least and then uh infantry effective at ambush attacks encountering heavy armor targets so this is going to be if you if you see man of arms or knights this is going to be your goal one of your better units against them the musafati warrior now the tricky thing is you can see there are no uh, there's no ranged armor so that's the struggle i have is like typically you have man of arms on the front line right your man of arms fighting against each other that might tank some archer shots like these are not going to tank archer shots at all they're going to get heavily countered by range units okay and you can see donzo also has no ranged armor out of the gate uh so that's kind of a tricky thing about them uh is they're good against it gets armor but you, you got to be careful because they will melt to an archer front line also they they won't do very well against uh you know the, in in general uh mangonels can be quite effective against a civilization Okay, uh, so yeah, they're good against countering armored units, anti-armor specialists, essentially. Low health countered by archers. So good for like a hit and run or a stealth raid attack on some villagers or something like that because they are very speedy. Okay, into the archer range. At the archer range, we've got the archer. Oh, there it is. We have the archer. That This is the typical archer you already know about. You know and love. 30 food, 50 wood. But the unique unit we have is the Javelin Thrower. You can see it's available here in the Second Age. 80 food and 40 gold. Now, you're typically going to have plenty of gold because of these gold pit mines. I'm in the Second Age, so I could drop down a second pit mine, right? And put some houses around that. Like, that's something you can do. There we go. I've built that nice and bad. Look at those walls, by the way. <laughs> Don't those look amazing? Uh, the walls for this civilization are just... I just love them. They look so cool. I want to build, let's build a tower on there. Sorry, I get distracted. They're just so cool looking. I really like the uh, the design they've done for these. Anyways, okay, there's your walls. Got some stone wall towers. Um, let's get back to the archery range. So anyways, you're going to have that gold you need for the javelin thrower. This is more like the skirmisher unit from Age of Empires 2. It is specifically good against other archers archers okay it's a specialist anti-range specialist look at this it has ranged armor so you don't want to be shooting at these with archers you need to be up with the uh, up against them with either uh your horsemen or perhaps some spearmen there in the second age of your other civilizations uh, your archer's going to get beat pretty well by them i typically like to lean on like a javelin and donzo composition and then I'll mix some archers in with it uh, because this is going to take care of any cavalry units. This is going to take any archer uh, of any of your archers, and this will take care of, of course, any of those infantry you might have. So it's kind of a good trio. And the the Musafati can kind of be like extra sometimes because let's be honest, a lot of people are going to make an archer heavy composition. Compositions. Imagine going against longbows, uh, and the Musafati will get uh, wrecked by that. But uh, yeah, it's, you can see very different, right? As far as the ca the units and the counters you have available. Okay, that's the barracks in the archer range, and the fun doesn't stop there. By the way, before we move on, in the next age we will have access, or the fourth age, the Musafati Gunner, which is their unique gunpowder unit, um, which can stealth. Woohoo! That's pretty fun. And look at one of these texts you have later on down here. You can get poisoned arrows. This is insane. I would not be surprised if they nerfed this. It deals damage over time. So you get this, they shoot, and they'll stack. So if you got 30 of them, and they do it, it's, it's all going to stack. So they don't have a crossbow unit, and this is kind of how they make up with it, but it can be very powerful. But you still got to deal with those armored units, uh, you know, with kind of some different means. So don't sleep on this poison arrows tech. It's one you want to get right away when you reach the the castle age okay we've got our scout already now you can upgrade this to be a warrior scout which i showed you here very cheap by the way 15 food 35 gold one of the unique things about the civ is all of their upgrades are uh, in the castle age they have basically the same roster of units but their upgrades are cheaper so that's kind of like the uh the mechanics they've made it for teching up okay now they don't have a, a, a horseman or a knight they have a sofa which is kind of in between a horseman and a knight i've got one right here and this horseman or i'm sorry the sofa i'm gonna call him horseman most of the time anyways uh looks really cool it's got a different colored horse than our typical and it's got some out of the gate you can see it's got so two melee armor two uh ranged armor pierced armor so it's going to be uh, have some of those resistance. It's got some de decent uh, damage, uh, 16 attack plus two versus infantry. It does not have a unique multiplier versus archers where the traditional horseman has uh, counters, uh, additional multipliers versus archers. This is just plus two versus infantry. It's kind of a sweeping. Uh, and But where it also excels is it's got some ex extra power and it's faster than a knight. 
Okay, so it's kind of in between a horseman and a knight is the way I see this. And you've got it available in the second age. So you don't have a knight in the second age, but you got an almost knight, and he's speedy. So it might even be better than a knight. You've got the speed and most of the damage there and some resistance. So a very cool unit, the backbone of your cavalry uh, army. And, or you can just throw in some cheap scouts. So you can upgrade these to uh, the warrior scouts. I'll show you the tech here on this tier one when we get that. And some of the techs you can look at here for later on, there's those upgrades. Uh, you can get the imported armor, which is going to increase the armor of the sofa by plus two. So this adds in Castle Age plus two armor. That's going to be great uh, as far as their resistance. And then the in uh, Age 4, the Ferema leadership increases the movement speed of nearby infantry. So you've got these, you know, paired up with your army. It's going to make your army even speedier. Think about those uh, Musufati with some additional speed as well. So that's going to be a very nice tech, especially in to the late game. Okay, take a look at that warrior scout. Now that we've upgraded him, you can see he has seven attack. Now they did nerf scouts. They all scouts have a base level of one attack now. This guy can get up to seven. So, you know, before imagine there's a scout over there kind of chasing maybe an early trader or a villager, and then suddenly, boom, he gets his upgrade and he's doing seven attack. That's going to be very significant, especially if you got two of them dishing out 14 attack per volley, right? Uh, so that's the core arsenal of this civilization. Uh, I think we talked about everything in H2 here. Here. Let's look at aging up. We've got our our, uh, our cattle ranches going on, uh, and now let's look at aging up. Look at those towers. Look at this. Oh my gosh, isn't that cool looking? Wow. <laughs> I don't think I'm being uh, dramatic with it. This is so amazing. Okay, let's look at our age up options. A nearby castle, I'm um, sorry, nearby cattle provide 20 food per minute. That's the Grand Fulani Corral, aka the Muvu. It's the Muvu. We know it. It's going to be generating food. You're going to be good for days. Or you have the Ferimba Garrison. Quickly produces uh, barracks and archery range units of five at a time. Units cost is converted to gold and reduced by 20%. So a military, it's kind of similar to how the Burgrave Palace used to be with batch training, except for it's all at once okay now uh, i will just show you this grand fulani uh, corral you typically want to build this you see the aura you want to try to build all of your uh live uh, cattle ranches uh, in this like in a square like this and hopefully not this close to a gold like i did there so then when you build your corral yeah i can see yeah i gotta I got get better at my, my base building here guys but oh my god anyone with those is gonna be freaking out right now Okay, but there you go. You can do it like that, and it will we'll boost all of the uh, the cattle ranches around here. So Now, it looks like there's more on here. These actually aren't working. I have too many. Right? You can only put three inside one of these. So you can garrison them and ungarrison them. But the one we're actually going to build right now, because I think that's pretty self-explanatory, I really want to show you this Farimba garrison, because it's a pretty cool thing. Okay, So it's kind of like a barracks-type uh, building. Let's go ahead and plop that down, maybe right there in the middle of town. Okay, so we're making the Ferimba Garrison. So it's a military landmark, and uh, it's not to be slept on. Like, we talked about these cows, and part of the tricky thing, you have the balance of, okay, I'm adding more town centers, am I adding traders, am I adding gold pits, am I adding cattle ranchers? Uh, the, I mean, the, the answer is, yes, get them all, but it's got to be a balance, right? If you're under heavy pressure and you overinvest in uh, some some of these uh, livestock that perhaps you don't get your investment back in, and you're hit by a big army or a ram push, you could be in trouble. So while the the, uh, the cattle landmark could be nice, this can also be very good if you know you're under some heavy pressure or I want to put some presence on the map. And perhaps you get military presence on the map, you can focus on your trading. By the way, let's uh, I'll go down here and set some trade up just so you can see uh, that toll outpost uh, doing some work. I'm putting outpost right there. There we go. Okay, so this is just about complete. I also really like how this building looks. It's just really cool. Build a mine here just for the heck of it. I might as well build a farm too so you can see what those look like. There are some farms. There we go. Okay, here's the Firmba Garrison. Now check this out. So essentially, you get a whole batch of units for you know one wholesale price. So for 360 gold, you get the Donzo. 320 gold, the Musafali. 320 the Archer. 480 for the Javelin. And remember, gold is usually a surplus with the civilization because these gold pits. And I hit what? I just hit the third age, so I could go find an additional gold mine and I could build another gold pit if I wanted to build some houses around that. Okay, so very cool landmark. Let's queue this up. It'll take 22 seconds to train those. I mean, that's compared to spending, what, 15 seconds for a single Donzo? In 22 seconds, I'm going to get uh, a whole batch of five Donzo. Okay, so here they come. They're going to be jumping out. Let's get those uh, upgrades in queue there. Might as well. 
We'll get the poison arrows and everything. That's a really cool tech. Okay, upgrading those units. There we go. We got our, our group of Donzo. So this could be really used. Uh, perhaps you've gone for like an, an archer and cav composition or whatever composition it might be. Uh, a, uh, and then suddenly hit the third age, you want to add in a different unit. And it's like, boom, you can get out a whole batch of five of them. So pretty cool as far as that's concerned. Uh, again, you could keep training cattle. Nothing really new there, uh, tech-wise. And let's see, do we finish our market? We did. So let's go ahead and do some trading so you can see what that looks like when they go past that toll outpost. I could build a few of them, too. We'll build one here, too. There we go. Now, let's build a siege workshop just so you can see. Uh, they have the, the standard roster of uh, siege units. I kind of wish they had given them something unique. We've got the Great Bombard, of course, with the uh, with the Ottomans, but they just gave them kind of the same siege as all the other European civilizations. It's only the only point I would say could have been improved. It would be cool to have a unique siege unit, but it is what it is. Okay, now check this out. Here comes my trader. Uh, now, oh, they haven't picked up any gold yet, so I think they have to pick it up first. This shouldn't do anything yet. Yeah, so it'll be on the way back, and we'll see that come out. While they're walking, uh, Siege Workshop is almost complete there. Let's build a keep here. Might as, might as well see what this keep looks like. Put, put it right there in the middle of town. Their architecture looks really cool. Let's upgrade one of these to stone so you can see that. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, we're about to do our first trip. You can see that there. Taxation aura traders and trade ships that pass the toll instantly provide bonus resources based on the amount being carried. Okay, so this is going to very quickly happen. Ready? Okay, 40 gold. And boom, it's got that toll. Trader has recently been taxed by a toll outpost. You see there's a cooldown, so you can't just like go in circles and get those taxes. Uh, it's going to, uh, and it has a total of five. So you see I says, okay, it's been taxed one time. They can be taxed a total of five times. So we will get taxed there. And I, uh, it says, it's, how much percent does it say it gets? 10%. Uh, so math majors, 10% uh, uh, of 40. We'll see that when it gets dropped off here in just a moment. Oh, it looks like we didn't finish this gold pit. Might as well add that in. Wait, what? Oh, I just never built it. The outline was there. Okay, so bringing back that 40 uh, gold. So 10%, it, it went through two of those. It got, wait, it says 40. Uh, is it not, is it just reflected because he's really close to this? 40. He goes through it. Oh, it, okay, I gotcha. It instantly gives the gold off when it goes past. I'm sorry. I thought it was when it reached its final destination. So when it passes these toll outposts, it'll instantly get give you some gold. So um, you have to spread them out because there is a cooldown on it. Uh, we've, we have seen that. So that's something you got to consider. Uh, you have to spread. You can't just like have too many taxations too close. But even in a small trade route like this, like look, we can hit, what, two tax zones? I think they'll get another one here. One more second. Uh, I thought they would get some more gold. Oh, is it because it was already inside the aura? I don't know. I'll mess around a little bit more, but you guys get the idea. They've got traders. They've got these uh, tow outposts um, that are going to uh, provide some additional boosts. Look at this keep. Wow. Amazing looking. I love it. It looks so terrifying. Now, I upgraded one of these to stone, and it doesn't... Now, I would say it is very hard to tell the difference. Okay, so this is a regular tower. This is a stone tower. Like This one's a little darker. But I don't know. It's not as extreme as like the other outpost upgrades to stone. I don't. Know. I think that could be maybe improved. So if you see the darker looking towers, those are going to be the stone ones, I guess. But that's uh, maybe could be a little bit more clear. Looking at the siege workshop, here's your regular stuff: spring gold, mangonel, counterweight, trebuchet. They got a bombard, but they do have access to the cauldron. And I gotta say. I personally prefer having a civilization with a culverin in my arsenal versus the Great Bombard. I love a Great Bombard, but let's be honest, if you can kill everyone's siege with the culverin, it ain't gonna matter, right? And they're they're likely gonna have a surplus of gold because of these gold pits. Uh, it is, uh, well, that's not the gold pit, that's the quarry right there. But uh, yeah, I really like culverin. I think it's a it's also what makes them very, very strong. Okay, uh, the only thing we didn't look at was the, the moss. Let's go ahead and build that. I think we hit all the techs. Uh, let's build a blacksmith just to show you what that looks like. There it is. There's our mosque. Unfortunately, no unique techs in the mosque. Again, I, I love when there's like some unique stuff about civilizations, but it would be cool to not just have the same techs we always have here as we get new civilizations. But maybe that'll be later. Or maybe that's just how it is. Okay, here's our blacksmith. You do see we've got precision training. This is a unique tech we can get. Increased range damage of Donzo by plus six, archers by plus two, and javelin throwers. So this is a tech that's going to help everything out. So in age four, get as fast as possible. It's not even that expensive. 350 uh, gold, 150 wood. Okay, so that's a tech you're going to get when you get to the fourth age. 
Okay, it is time to age up. Going into our final age to the Imperial Age. We've almost looked at everything. We've got the Griot Bera. Begin a festival. You spend 300 gold, which you're going to have a lot of anyways, providing global enhancements to either a food rate, military production speeds, or damage of torches in siege. One festival at a time. So essentially this cooldown, you can get these buffs. I kind of think of it as like the community plaza from AOE 3 or the fire pit, whatever you want to call it. You also have the Fort of the Huntress, like a keep landmark. Access to keep infant infantry units nearby the landmark enter stealth for 10 seconds. Now, I haven't used this a ton yet, but sounds like a crazy frontline landmark. Boost body warriors and gunners gain first strike, dealing more damage when breaking stealth. So it'll boost the stealth of your opponent, of your uh, units. If you really like using these stealth mechanics or, or, and like uh, want to put this in an uh, offensive place, or, that, this could be a great option for you. But let's build this Griot Barra. It's the one I've seen used the most. It's the one I've person been using and let's uh let's get this uh built here it's kind of cool it's got all these these colors around it there's our traders doing their thing look at all the resources we have nah it's because we did infinite <laughs> resources to ai let's build some more of those walls well now nah, i don't think i have any more villagers i think i've there's one staying there that's okay so we're building this griot barra and with that i think that will be uh, in addition to the madrasa our final uh our final buildings to take a, a look at here with the malians very, very good civilization, by the way. I've, I think they, they are probably stronger than the Ottomans from what I've seen early on. They can, they're just really quick, and they have so many passive generations of gold and food. I mean, you could build all these cattle ranches, and when you go to age three, you know, this is like when you want to really go for a military thing, but typically if you're going like a, a boomer route, you do want to build that cattle landmark because that passive food is just going to be so nice. Okay, here we go. We've got Agria Tabara. Take a look at that. And you'll see a little circle show up when I activate one of these. So here's those festivals. They cost 300 gold apiece. This one will uh, increase your food gather rate for 30 seconds by 50%. Increases the military unit production speed so you can produce your units faster with this one. And increases siege and torch damage for all units by 100% for 30 seconds. Now, I kind of wish this was a kind of like global icon I could just click on, you know, like somewhere on the side. I don't know. Uh, it would be kind of nice. Instead of, but for now, I think you almost might want to hotkey this for you uh, high-level players. Okay. Okay, let's activate one of these and you'll see I activate that festival you see look at that that festival's going on look how happy they are and they've got a total of 30 seconds to do that so that is going to be how that landmark works let's build our university and we'll place the foundation for a wonder because why not there's our wonder being built and we've got our madrasa coming up and those will be our final text to take a look at oh one more tech we did miss at the town center you can get the Banco repairs. Buildings are repaired 100% faster. This is available at the beginning of the game. So if you're repairing walls or towers or towns or keeps, whatever it might, this is a great tech to get. You can boost that repair speed. So uh, pretty cool. And there's that university. Uh, the same old stuff you're used to seeing here. They don't have the f the incendiary arrows. I think that's because they have the poison uh, poison arrows upgrade already, the archer range. So these are your options you're going to be uh, looking at, just the same as we typically would have. And then there's our great mosque being built. Now, I will do a dedicated video where I go through the naval units of all the civilizations because it has been quite an extensive naval rework. So don't worry. I haven't forgotten about it. We're going to be doing some uh, naval units next. But there you go. That's everything you need to know about the Malians. We've talked about the unique units and their counters they have here uh, at their stable archery range and barracks. We've talked about the toll outpost and its buff, buff it provides to your gold uh, for your traders. The Muvu mechanics, our pit mine, and the houses, and all of that jazz. So let me know. What do you think about the civilization? Are there any other questions you have? Or is there anything you want to provide more clarity on that perhaps I missed? I'm still learning about this as we go as well. I hope you enjoyed the civilization overview. I hope that you hit subscribe on the channel. Check out a few of my other videos. I've got some casted games, build order guides, and I'm always streaming over live on twitch.tv slash Fitzbro, where I'm experimenting civilizations all the time. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I hope to see you in the next one.